on this episode. Returning to the scene of the crime, exactly, in Utah. I got a lot to prove to myself. It's the demon that you've got to slay. Oh! Finally, Nitro has a series. They are suited, booted, and ready to send it! battle the anticipation for it is absolutely massive this is launch control it's been a long wait two years to be exact but rallycross is back in america and it all starts in utah it's the opening round of five events that will feature the most elaborate, unique tracks in the world. So we're coming up to Utah, finally. We're getting ready for round one of Nitro Rallycross, and it just, it sounds cool even to say round one because that means there are more rounds. It's always just been this one hit banger of an event. The anticipation for it is absolutely massive. Finally, Nitro has a series. Travis has a vision for what Rallycross can evolve to become. You know, the foundation for what Nitro is trying to create is something that's just at a whole nother level entertainment wise for the fans and the drivers. So as far as the Rallycross program goes, uh, Scott Speed is going to be coming back. We're really excited to welcome him back to the team after his injury. To have him back behind the wheel in a race again um, on the grid is going to be really exciting for all of us. And then along with him, we're going to have Travis in the car for all events. He's going to be, along with Scott, the core of the program. So those two guys are going to be the, the team that we're going to build around. So a bit of a surprise, there was a third car. But we weren't sure whether the third car was going to be all season, whether it was going to be guest drivers, how it was going to work. But for the first two events, Subaru signed Andreas Backward. Now he's got a bit of history with the team. He did a few events with them at ARX in 2019. And Backward is without a doubt one of the best rallycross drivers in the world. So it's a great lineup at Subaru. It is a superstar lineup. But, but the pressure's on because they still don't know how quick they are. They don't know whether or not they're gonna have that pace to win. You know, on, on, on paper you go Travis Pastrana and Scott Speed, awesome. But if you look at it, you know, Scott finished Rallycross two years ago, 18 months ago, with a broken back. Utah, 2019. While leading the qualifiers, Scott overshoots a landing. The impact broke numerous vertebrae. Since then, his life has been dedicated to recovery and rehab. Today, he returns to competition for the first time. Re returning to the scene of the crime, exactly, in Utah. Racing with a gap jump means the weekend starts with jump practice, adding to Scott's nerves. For sure, there's a bit of apprehension on you know the jumps. I got a lot to prove to myself that I that I can be strong enough to go out there and get back to old form. As is tradition, his teammate Travis Pastrana will test the jump first. He lands short. Scott's up next. Like I said, I think if they get on the limiter too early. It's... We had the jump that we had there a year and a half ago, and we landed to flat now with this stuff. I think it's fine. But now, like, I think it's even worse. In testing, he had some concerns and he had some fears, and it was maybe invoking some of that, um, that fear of what he had been through and the fear of getting injured again. I think personally it's more about the mental side, you know, Scott's a fit dude, he, he, I, I know the work he's been doing in the background to get back to full fitness, but it's, it's in the head, it's a question of whether or not you, could, you can get over it in the head. For now, first time over, just hold the button down, don't worry about it, when you go in the air, let go of the button, hold it wide open, you'll be perfect. perfect. The track's slightly different, but it's the place, it's the, it's the demon that you've got to slay. I don't care how good a professional driver you are, if that's where the incident was and, and you're going back there, you've got to face that demon straight away in the heat of competition. So this is a real test for Scott. It's going to be hard. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if it's going to be the first jump or the 10th jump or the 100th jump, but I, I am determined I will get back to it. Um, but it's going to be a process and I'm excited to, to go through that process. Two years.
acres of hurdles, he clears one more, and it's a big one. Those who know him best know how meaningful this is. Now, Scott can focus on winning. What? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Nice job, buddy. Thank you. I'm so thankful for Scott because so many people are waiting for 2022. They're waiting to see if this is safe, if it's feasible, if the cars are gonna break. And with Scott saying, yes, I broke my back, but I believe in this championship, that is the, that's the biggest thing that anyone could have done for Nitro to say that this is going to be a successful series and that we have our ducks in a row and it's gonna work. With practice done, the first day features two car head-to-head -head battles. Win a battle, collect one championship point, and move on. And we're gonna find out how we stack up against some of the fastest World RX cars out there. So we are really looking forward to a battle. The tournament-style brackets are the first opportunity to take stock of the competition. The Pastrana versus Hansen rivalry is one to watch. The Hansen brothers have won every Nitro Rallycross race to date. To win the championship means beating the Hansens. Subaru might as well get used to it. The battles live up to their name. Pastrana and Timmy Hansen are neck and neck until Timmy suffers a flat tire and spins. Oh, Subaru takes the bracket win against the biggest championship contender. Flag waves for Travis Pastrana. Timmy Hansen still that stranded. A, that was a hell of a race. I don't think he's going to agree with it, but I think it was pretty fun. My man. Dude, good job, man. Your race was awesome. I get close enough to just use them as a berm. <laughs> yeah, but so. man, that was the best. We were side by side for a good lap. Next up, Baccarude versus Kevin Hansen. Kevin's now got the inside line, Backwood goes high. Oh, Backwood's gonna come low now into the dust. The blinding dust denies his chance of victory. I've raced every year of my life since I was 10. You know, this, this last break, this last off season we had is the longest I've ever gone without racing. So it just adds to the excitement and to the fire to, to get back out there and get the racing going. Scott's racecraft, despite the long break, is as sharp as ever. He dominates the early bracket races. The Subarus are strong, setting up a blue-on-blue -blue battle bracket fight. That's uh, Pastrana and Speed going through to the semi-finals now. So we've finally battle brackets underway. First time we've seen battle brackets and, you know, any fears were, were put away immediately. Subaru right the way through to the end of the battle bracket. Scott Speed versus Travis Pastrana. To see two Subarus right at the end, big sigh of relief. You know, the team knows the pace is there. They know they're going to be in for hopefully a good season. There's a, there's a long way to go and anything can happen in Rallycross, but to see Speed and Pastrana in there, you know they've got all the ingredients right on that car. I mean, that was, that was an all right race. I mean, if I had to lose anybody here, it'd be that guy that I'd be happy with. So either way, I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, but we're gonna have a battle. We're gonna have a lot of fun out there right now. So here we go. Pastrana versus Speed on the run to turn one. Look for the green. Great start by both of them side by side. Scott Speed's got the edge of Travis Pastrana gonna run him out wide. Pastrana gonna go all the way around the outside. And we see Pastrana is the only driver who's not given up if he loses the start. I'll guarantee you he goes with Scott here. They battle as hard as they can while keeping contact to a minimum. No matter what the outcome is here, they know that Subaru is the big winner on the opening day of the championship. Gonna try the same move that they can't quite get their speed. Carries a little bit more speed around the outside line. They're stronger though in the two roost there, completely blinded. Cautiously in second and lost in the dust, Pastrana makes an error. Gonna try for the pass. He goes deep and high on the brakes. Almost clips the rear corner on the tires oh, on the end of the K rail. Oh boy, oh no, boy. now clips the inside. That's game over. Scott Speed should take this and he's gonna blast down towards the finish line. And our first ever top qualifier for Nitro Rallycross is Scott Speed ahead of his teammate Travis Pastrana. That is some comeback. There's the team. Big hand for them. With Scott topping the day one results, 
team puts the worry away. They are exactly where they want to be against the best in the world. No, it was, it was definitely some closure uh, during that weekend. Not a bad first day back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah, back to the court. Back to the court. Much better than that. Yeah. Thank you. I think it gave me a lot of confidence. Um, so I, I was very happy with how quickly I sort of normalized and, and felt like myself again. Day two dawns to a different challenge. Today is all about the main event with 50 championship points up for grabs. Today is all about uh, trying to get into that final. Uh, we have several chances. There's going to be qualifying heats first, two heats uh, with seven drivers in each. Top two goes directly to the final in the top spots. Uh, then the one that doesn't make the finals there, they can do it in the semi-final. Top two goes through to the, the final from the semi-final. If you don't get to the, into the final before that, then you have the last chance qualifier where also top two goes through to the final. In the final, we have 10 cars, which is going to be like tons of horsepower together into turn one, which is going to be pretty epic. Pastrana and Speed's day one results mean they are both on pole position in their opening heats. Win here, and they go straight to the front row of the final. But this is the first time all these cars have raced door to door. Anything can happen. Off the start, Scott takes the gap jump line. It's expected to be quicker. It's Scott Speed to go straight to the gap jump. There's a car goes with him. Timmy's gone joker in the background. But minor overnight changes to the track put him on the back foot because it isn't faster. He's in second. The other Subaru drivers watching from the paddock take note. This is absolutely perfect for Timmy. He's going to see him on the front row. Fraser McConnell is P2. Where's Scott Speed? What's out of Scott Speed? Speed? Is MIA right now. Scott's race goes from bad to worse with damage to the rear suspension. Absolute disaster then for Scott Speed, the battle bracket winner, the guy who yesterday was so impressive, has had some sort of issue. He's down as a DNF. A rallycross race day is always chaotic. One car returns for repairs. The other two depart for their first heat. Pastrana leads the way into the first corner with Bakarud mid-pack. Pastrana goes inside. They opt for the Joker lap straight away. Nice job over that tabletop jump. So look at this, the tabletop being utilized. This is, as you said, a formula that none of the drivers are going for. That big up takes that Joker lap as Pastrana is leading the pack with the clean air. Andre backwards in a second. Super one and two. All right, so again, I think there was some great communication. Scott Speed said, hey, let's try out the tabletop. Let's see what goes on. At least Scott's misfortune helps his teammates. Travis Pastrana because he was heading about. He will be polling the final here at Utah Motorsports Campus later on today. Great performance by Pastrana. Travis takes the win and advances directly to the final. It's a crucial win for the team's title chase. I can't believe it. We, we won, but uh, yeah, definitely some track. Uh, we made some track adjustments, and unfortunately now the jump is the slower line. We didn't know that, so we went out there. Scott fouled it first, so that's uh, a little disappointing for, uh, for the team for sure. As creator of the series, Travis's role goes beyond just driver. Travis is, is kind of the, the architect of Nitro Rallycross and he loves it. He, but he's also out there smoothing out the dirt. He's with the dirt crew, he's with the track wetting crew. There's, there's a lot of distraction there and Travis is going to need to focus as much as he can on the racing. So selfishly, I kind of want Travis to be involved a lot with the series, which he is. But I guess from a racing point of view, you know, if you were his engineer or his spotter, you're going to want to take him away from the dirt, Travis. You know, come back, look at the laptop. And so, kind of wearing a couple hats, the track guys are like, get off the Bobcat, yeah. get off your stuff. Um, all the officials are like, stop trying to change the format. So I just been driving, but um, hey, at the end of the day, I think we got to change that back just a little bit before the final. Okay. Maybe get a hot lap or something so the guys can test it. But uh, at the end of the day, we need the jump to be a little faster, right? Next up, the semifinals. So here we go again. 
Scott Speed versus Fraser McConnell. Remember the low line, we know is quickest at the minute, so are we yeah. going to see all five drivers peel off to the left-hand side? Great start, Scott Speed on the inside line, moves across, trying to put Fraser McConnell out wide. To his credit, Scott never makes the same mistake twice. He cuts to the Joker lap and takes control of the race. Speed, he's got the clean air, he's feeling confident. He just saw his teammate Travis Pastrana take that line, and that is the faster line as it stands. Scott Speed really whipping around, keeping it tight in that first turn. Two Subarus qualified, one more to go. Scott Speed gets the win. He's going to be joining Travis Pastrana, his other Subaru teammate. Now only if Andreas Backroot can join them. Focus shifts to Bakarut. Subaru wants to lock up three spots in the final. It's their best chance at taking control of the championship straight off the bat. Bakarud knows he needs the results to support his teammates. Bows, Bows holds onto that line. Kevin Hansen has to go around the outside. I reckon Kevin might go choke, but Bakarud's got Bows. Slides up the inside of the number 13. So into the lead for Andreas Backrud, Faust all over the back of him. The inside pass makes quick work of the field. Now Andreas is controlling the race from the front. I, I'm really impressed by Backrud and these Subarus have really just advanced throughout the weekend. From Thursday to today, they have been completely different cars. Nothing changes from here. Andreas matches Scott's result by winning the second semi-final race. Andreas Bakrud going to go through and join his teammates, Travis Pastrana and Scott Speed. All three factory Subarus are going to go through here. Awesome. All right, so we just, we just got back in from our semi-final two win. Felt amazing, you know, what a relief. So all three Subarus in the final. Travis up top, Scott in the middle, I'm in the back. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Three of our cars qualified for the final and it's amazing. It, it's such a great feeling to have come here and be competitive with the best cars and the best drivers in the world. And you do it a lot of testing, you do it by yourself. And uh, to prove it works here is, is a great feeling for the whole team. Really great way to start the season. We're very excited. All that racing, all those heat wins, add up to zero championship points. To get those, you need to be in the final. As encouraging as the pace has been, what really matters comes next. Here we go then, final time. You can hear the clunk of the sequential gearboxes. Drivers going through their final prep now. They are suited, booted, and ready to send it! Off the line, Travis takes the lead from pole position. This is his race to lose. Into turn one, Travis slides wide. Around the outside line. Uh, second oh. of the oh. And stalls. Pastrana runs wide, spins. was there contact? Up in behind him, it's one of the Supers, I think it's Scott Speed. He is, it's Scott Speed into pit two. Speed emerges from the fray as the team's best hope for the win. Travis falls to last. And Scott is under attack. The chaos at the merge shuffles him down to fifth. Visibility in the pack goes from bad to blinding. We couldn't see who Don Joe from the dust. We were focused on that front and back. Andreas avoids some of the carnage with an early Joker lap. He joins Travis in the dust bowl. Everything they had going for them is now working against them. Scott takes the Joker lap to find clean air, but it doesn't help. He slots in front of Bakarud further compounding the problem. The Subarus take hit after hit as they feel their way around the track. Travis passes Bakarud and follows Faust into the dust. Contact results in a flat for the Subaru. Bakarud is the first to suffer a major failure. Faust has got a problem while the Subarus has pulled off. Backward it is. Backward's dropped down to P9. 
So All backwards right, so, out. Oh, man. So back route and foul. Stay off the track. Scott remains in the hunt. stalls, then takes on friendly fire. Tell you what, we've got a hell of a story here. Timmy Hansen, last night that car was strapped to the front of a container and they were pulling it straight using a forklift <laughs> truck. But it is the 2018 Nitro Rallycross winner who's going to make it two out of three and the Hansons are unbeaten in Nitro Rallycross so far. Timmy Hansen takes the win here in Utah. They are on a tear. Is this a shape of things to come for the entirety of the season? They survive to see the checkered flag, but they'll settle for fifth, sixth, and ninth. The frustration among the team is palpable. The thing about motorsport is that there's a certain amount of risk and there's a certain amount of chaos, and, and that being part of the sport, means that you know that sometimes there's a result that doesn't line up with how well you did that weekend. I had one job in the first turn. Don't give up the inside. And I tried to push Timmy out, and all of a sudden he wasn't on my outside, he was on my inside. And then I panicked, I stalled it, I stalled the car. I'm a professional rally driver. Travis was sticking to the plan, sticking to the plan, and, and I don't mean to dog him, you know, but like, we got into the final there and, and just just you had to own turn one. And that, that's the race. I mean, you're not gonna come back from that, you know? You know, things didn't work out for us great to this today or this weekend as a whole, but I can't control the outcome. So I'm super pumped to get to the next race because I know with this group of people that we'll have a shot to win. With just six days until the next event, redemption, hopefully, is on the horizon. Next time on Launch Control. The ERX track, when I saw it for the first time, like my mouth just dropped. The team looks to rebound from the chaos in Utah. If they can't win here, they know their championship hopes are all but over. Racing is uh, it's a game. There's rules to the game. It's my job to figure out what all the rules are and how to best exploit everything I can. That was bold. That's next time on Launch Control. <laughs>